Time for one step equation examples. So in this video, I'll be going over some example problems, showing you how to organize the problems in the best ways so that you can find the solution. And also, most importantly, checking your answer. So the first one, a minus six equals 13. We always want to isolate the variable. In this case, we want to get the a all by itself. In order to do that, we're going to have to do the opposite of a minus 6. So the opposite of minus 6 is plus 6. And whatever we do on one side, we have to do on the other as well. So now we have negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So those cancel out, which leaves me with a on the left side and 13 plus 6 is 19. So we have our solution, a equals 19. We have to make sure this is correct, and this is where we check. That's the cool thing about algebra, is that you can determine if your answer is correct without even looking at an answer key or checking in with your teacher. So the original equation was a minus 6 is equal to 13. We said a was 19, so we'll substitute that in. 19 minus 6, is that equal to 13? 19 minus 6 is 13. 13 is equal to 13, and we know we are correct. Second one, x plus 4 is equal to negative 14. So once again, we have to get the variable by itself. In this case, we have to isolate the variable x. So we have x plus 4 happening right now. In order to get the x by itself, we have to do the opposite of the operation, which in this case is plus 4. The opposite of adding 4 is subtracting 4. And whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side of the equal sign. So now we have what is f plus 4 or positive 4 minus 4 is 0, so that cancels out. And then we have negative 14 minus 4, which is negative 18. So after we cancel on the left side, we're left with x. So x is equal to negative 18. Is this correct? We always have to double check our answer to find out. x plus 4 is equal to negative 14 is the original problem. We said x is equal to negative 18, so we have negative 18 plus 4. Is that equal to negative 14? Well, negative 18 plus 4 is negative 14, so yes, we are equal on both sides, and we know our answer is correct. On to the next one. Negative 3 is equal to z minus 8. In this case, we want to get the z by itself. What's happening on the side with the z? We're subtracting 8. So what is the opposite of subtracting 8? If you said adding 8, you're correct. And whatever we do on one side of the equal sign, we also have to do on the other side. You're definitely getting it. So now, looking at it this way, we have negative 3 plus 8 which leaves us with 5. Then on the other side, we have the z, but then let's do this first. What is negative 8 plus 8? It leaves us with 0. So we have 5 is equal to z. Notice I could put plus 0, but since 0 has no value, I'm just going to leave it out. So now we have our solution of z equals 5. Is it correct? I don't know. Let's find out. So we have negative 3 is equal to z minus 8. Rewrite it with our solution. Negative 3 equals 5 minus 8. See if those are equal. 5 minus 8 is the same as 5 plus a negative 8, which leaves me with negative 3. Negative 3 is equal to negative 3. We checked it, and we are good to go. Now we're dealing with fractions. That's okay. 1 half is equal to q plus 2 thirds. Remember, I want to get the variable by itself. 
In this case, that's the Q. So what's happening on the side with the Q? We're adding two-thirds. What is the opposite of adding two-thirds? If you said subtracting two-thirds, you are correct. And whatever we do on one side, we also have to do on the other side as well. So let's look on the right side first. We have positive two-thirds minus two-thirds, which cancels out, which leaves us with Q on the right side. On the left side, we have one-half minus two-thirds. So one-half minus two-thirds. In order to subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. So what is the common denominator between two and three? Two times three is six. So six is our common denominator. One-half, we would have to do two times three, one times three, which leaves me with three over six. And two-thirds, three times two is six, two times two is four, so I'm left with 3 6 minus 4 6. 3 minus 4 gives me negative 1, denominator of 6. So 1 half minus 2 thirds is negative 1 6. So now we know that Q is equal to negative 1 6. Let's make sure this is right though. Rewrite our original problem. 1 half equals Q plus 2 thirds. Let's go back to our common denominator fractions that we had from before. It may make it a little bit easier to make sure we're correct. So 1 half was 3 sixths and 2 thirds was 4 sixths. And then for Q, Let's rewrite it again. 3 6 is equal to, we said Q was negative 1 6 plus 4 6. Are these equal on both sides? Well, negative 1 6 plus 4 6 is in fact 3 6. So 3 6 is equal to 3 6, and we know our answer is correct. Number five, x minus 5.2 equals negative 18.73. So we always want to get the variable by itself. So what's happening with the x? We're subtracting 5.2. So the opposite of this would be to add 5.2. Whatever you do on one side, you also have to do on the other side. Now we have negative 18.73 plus 5.2. So on the left side, we have negative 5.2 plus 5.2, which cancels out and leaves me with x. And on the right side, we have negative 18.73 plus 5.2. Negative 18.73 plus 5.2 is negative 13.53. Let's clear this out of the way. So, is our answer correct? Let's find out by checking. So we have x minus 5.2 is equal to negative 18.73. And then for x, we said it was negative 13.53 minus 5.2. And is that equal to negative 18.73? Well, since I have two negative numbers, negative 13.53 minus 5.2 is the same as negative 13.53 plus a negative 5.2. Now, since I have both negative numbers, I can just add them. So I have 13.53 plus... 5.2, 0, 3, 7, 8, 1. So sure enough, we are left with negative 18.73 on both sides. Nicely done.